Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnit Podcast, podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, news, lifestyle, everything really, depending on the guests we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Romoliotis. On social media, you know me as PDV. It's returning guest on Pop Turnip. You'll recognize him from shows as Kim's Convenience, The Expanse, and Transplant. Sujif Varagis is back on Pop Turnip. Sujif, welcome to Pop Turnip and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Peter. It's great we're able to do this. Uh, last time we had a good chat and uh, people seem to love it. So uh, you're you're one step closer to being a uh, lead status of thir- uh, three time guest. So I feel like, do I have to do, get, do I get you something? Like a, a ribbon? Yeah, do I have to get you a ribbon or a mug or a robe? Do I, I feel like I gotta yeah, get, get to you get, something? Give me some merch, man. Give me some PD Beats merch. <laughs> Alternative merch. Absolutely, no, for sure. It's uh, I mean, there's a lot of projects that you, that you've worked on, and we talked about this last time too. I mean, they're all kind of coming out around the same time, right? How is that for you, kind of, in terms of the promotion and then the talking about all these shows like Kim's, The Expanse, and Transmit? It's exciting, but can it be overwhelming as well? Well. <laughs> you know it's it's exciting and uh i'm not complaining um i remember uh last well like right now uh i my appearance on the expanse just started uh streaming and uh that'll continue without giving too much away um and then kim's convenience season five uh, premieres next week i think i know and uh on canadian tv and then um so those are the two things that are coming out right now. About, I guess, uh, last February, I had uh, not only Kim's Convenience, but the Transplant premiere, and my um, I, I was starring in an episode of The Detectives uh, on CBC all in the same week. So this is nothing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, this is nothing. I mean... You, you mentioned it, you know, season five of Kim's Convenience is going to be on CBC. Very excited. And I have to tell you, I'm very excited. I mean, there's not much more I could say. I'm excited for the new season of Kim's Convenience, you, Jif. Uh, you know, Kim's Convenience is a phenomenon that I still can't quite believe. <laughs> when it started, you know, I just thought it was going to be this sweet little show that, you know, would be in Canada and, and maybe last a couple of seasons if we were lucky. Because I've been on those shows and I've been grateful, but but to see it sort of get uh, embraced by really the whole world because it's on Netflix everywhere. Um, I mean, my cousins in India get to watch it. It's fantastic. No, it's amazing, and it is part in some. You are it's it's a CBC show. It's available also on CBC Gem in Canada as well. People can watch it, but you know globally it is available on Netflix in other countries, which is amazing. I mean, Netflix is a powerhouse. I mean, there's not much more to say well, about and that. It's also on Amazon uh, in in Canada as well as Netflix and Gem. It's like crazy. You can't, <laughs> you can't escape it. it. You can't escape Mr. Meta. Uh, well, you know, I'd like to have <laughs> Mr. Meta on every episode, but uh, you know, I'm grateful that they use me when they do. It is amazing, and uh, specifically Netflix is just kind of pu- um, pumping out a lot of content. I remember seeing a stat about Kim's Convenience, the amount of households globally that it reached when it was put out in a short amount of time. Just from an industry perspective, do you find that as an actor storyteller, Sujif? I mean, how quick these shows are hitting? Like, that's what I find interesting. It's one thing for 100 million people to watch a show over like a year, but like, you know, like shows hitting you know 72 million households in like six days like it's it's pretty crazy to think about i mean you're throwing numbers at me that i don't even know yeah. uh like i do the show and i i like i i'm i'm part of the show but i'm not really privy to all of those kind that kind of information um i, I mean the show is we're making the show we're not really part of the promotion or anything of the show or not promotion but but you know all of those kinds of metrics so uh, you're telling me news i don't know i mean i just know anecdotally because i get lots of twitter followers now uh that's how i know the show's being seen outside canada and and i i and of course in canada but uh you know i'm just a, a cast member i'm not part of the i'm not part of the uh, 
the uh, uh, ratings people. So Absolutely. that's all. I mean, it's amazing. I, it's really amazing. But uh, it's so far beyond where I am in in terms of me being on the show. It's not. So we're we're just making the TV show. Yeah. No. It's it's. But it's. I think it's part also Sutra of the the binge culture, right? Where you know Kim is convenience in Canada. Like, like episodes are going to be coming out every week, and we're excited and everything. But a lot of these shows, right? Sutra come out on Netflix. 10 episodes you can wash them all right away right so i think that kind of has to do with that too right like how people don't waste time with these tv shows though they do not waste well, time and then it's an interesting thing because uh binging um you know uh, like uh, i'm on the expanse now and this season on the expanse they didn't release all the season at once you can't binge it uh they're putting uh, they had the first three or four when the show first dropped, the season dropped, mm -hmm. and then subsequent episodes are released only one a week. And I think that started when The Mandalorian um, started doing that, because in a way, binging was undermining the uh, reach, because people were just watching it the first day, and that was that. And Absolutely. they wanted the show to sort of have its own legs. So I think we're going to see sort of a combination of uh, releasing a whole season at once, See, for Kim's Convenience, it's very interesting because it's a it's one of the few shows that's actually made for conventional television first. And so the Canadian audience sees it on TV not, uh, uh, week by week until that's over. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to streaming services outside Canada. It streams inside Canada after it's on TV. But outside Canada, it's only then that it goes. So I think at that point, because the show has been sort of seen by its main audience in Canada, it's okay to, to release the binging. But I think we're going to see a combination of that uh, going forward. I, I mean, you know, you're talking about stuff that is way beyond the level where uh, of the cast member. We're, but it's we're interesting, though, right? It's interesting things, to but, hear that. But for, I get that it's interesting for you uh, and, and the audience to know that this is going on. I'm, I get it. I'm a geek. We, we know that, Sujif. I'm a numbers geek. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Well, but you know, it's 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 changed what television is. Yeah. You know, when I started, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. Absolutely. And and you know, when I started, my first step was seen. If you didn't see it on TV yeah. when it was on, you never saw it. That was it. It wasn't you know unless they rerun it. And they might rerun it once, maybe six months later, and but, that's the end but, of it. Absolutely, that's not the case at all right now. You you have a I have people talking to me about shows like I'll have Twitter followers or friends or whoever talking to me about shows that they've just seen that I did ten years ago <laughs> that are now part of the library of shows that are on and they don't know they just think I did it last week or something and uh -oh. I'm going oh oh yeah that show that was like uh, you know a long time ago absolutely um, but it's great because because you know you're you're when I started on TV, you felt like you were doing something that was disposable. Yeah. If you did a show, like you put your heart and soul in doing, into doing a show, it's seen once. Uh, if, if the audience didn't see it when it was on, you never saw it again. And it wasn't like a movie that had, um, you know, that lived on. You could go see a movie again or rent it or whatever. TV wasn't like that. No. So you, you really felt like what you were doing was disposable. Now, uh, I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like my body of work will live on you know in my lifetime and maybe after it absolutely no and, and it's great to see and you are working on a lot of really cool projects generally speaking with the expanse though sujif um just general not having to do with season five or your character i just i mean that's a show i've been watching for a while i mean l l let's be honest i follow nasa on instagram space is just so like fun to look at it's eye candy and everything and that show just hits it out of the park like the visuals of that show are just incredible well, i'll tell you something i've been working on that show since the pilot yep i uh, i was part of or i ha i've been part of what's called the loop group yep which is an uncredited group of actors who come in and do all the background voices mm -hmm. uh you know when you shoot a scene on a tv show and you've got the series leads talking in the foreground and there's 50 background people you know on the spaceship doing their thing well those people don't actually get recorded what they're saying on when they're filming they have to then be given voices and that's what people like i do huh. um so on a show like the expanse what's very interesting because i've been looping shows for 
25 years, they brought us in to learn Belter prior to us starting to work on the show. They really? invented that language. So we had to learn the Belter accent so we could improvise space talk with a Belter accent or even, you know, use Belter language. Uh, and that's the kind of care they put into it, uh, into it. You know, The Expanse is a very interesting show because it's science-based. Yep. Right? They're, they're, um, they're not doing anything that isn't plausible. They're not, there's no warp drive. There's no, you know, aliens or whatever, unless you want to talk about the protomolecule. Well, like, we won't go there. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not, they're not making it fantasy like a Star Trek does. They're really being true to what the science of the science fiction really is. And, for example, in my case, once I got cast on camera, my character is uh, sent to the moon as the first, uh, or as the new acting secretary general. Um, so after I got cast, I got a call from production. They said, oh, yeah, you got to come in for your 1-6 gravity training lesson. Wow. Right? So I had to learn. I what did you, what were your initial response? When you got that phone call, what was the response like? Like, when you got that phone call, I'm curious, what was well, the initial you know, response? I, I, said, I said to my agent, uh, you know, the special skill section of my acting resume is growing nicely. <laughs> I, have, I had to, you know, because I'm on transplant playing a surgeon. So they bring me in to learn the operations and so that we can do the operations. We, we rehearse those operation scenes in advance of filming so that it looks right on the day. Same thing with, um, with the expanse. I had to learn what one six gravity would be like so that, and it's, a, it's not a big thing, but they just want to make sure that I'm, I'm able to do that in a way that's, that's truthful. Um, and and so I you know that gets back to learning Belter and all that stuff. I mean, they they a show like The Expanse, a show like Transplant, we put a lot of they, or they put a lot of effort into making it uh, authentic and real, and and training the actors so that so you look at The Expanse, the series leads are really good at selling low gravity, yeah, because you can't tell that there is gravity when you know. Then it's almost gymnastics that they're doing when they're you know, walking around uh, the Rocinante and climbing the ladders. I mean, there's no low gravity in real life there, but they make it look like it's low gravity because they're really good at it now. Absolutely. And I just want to say, I'm just really happy to see how successful a lot of Canadian storytellers and Canadian shows are. The success that they're garni garnishing right now is just amazing. Like, I just want to say that, Sujif. Like, it's great to see how far... Canadian television has has, has well, come. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take take that as a compliment because, you know, I, like I said, I've been doing this a long time. Transplant is the first time I've been on a Canadian show, that's on a U.S. primetime network at the same time. Yeah, like that's it's awesome. You know, I that, that it's not an American show; it's a Canadian show set in Toronto, shot in Montreal, airing on NBC primetime. I mean, we've come a long way, baby. I know it's it, it's 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 amazing. And uh, nurses, which films also in in Toronto, was on Global. That's on NBC Another now Canadian too. Show that's that the NBC bought. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's amazing. People also don't know this. Realize uh, there was a show on Disney Channel a while ago called Life with Derek, um, yes. and that was like <laughs> that was as Canadian as could be. <laughs> But that was like bought by Disney. That wasn't even on like Family Channel right away. That was put on Disney Channel, Sujith. Part of their big like programming. And that was like a Canadian show. And people did not realize that. Well, look, I'm going to tell you, I go back a long way. And I started in this business as a writer. And one of the first gigs I ever had was writing for the Muppets. I wrote a TV series called Fraggle Rock. Yes. And that was shot in Toronto. I mean, the lead puppeteers were... You know, the Muppet, famous Muppet people. You wrote on Fraggle Rock? I was one of the original writers of Fraggle Rock. I did I not know episodes. that. That's crazy. Yeah. Jim Jim directed one of my episodes. Look me up. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's and, incredible. And, you know, so so um, Jim and Jerry Jewell, who was my mentor and boss, he was the head writer, and he wrote everything Miss Piggy and Kermit ever said. He was like the third Muppet, uh, but he was the writer. And, and uh, you know, the, the Muppet... Uh, I mean, the lead puppeteers, but everybody else who worked on that show was Canadian directors, writers, uh, background puppeteers, uh, a lot of the design people, the crew was Canadian. 
Uh, I mean, that you know, in terms of the 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 bodies, it was a Canadian content show. There is you know, there was I'm always going to say it's a Canadian content show, but you know what I mean. There was rumblings though that there was going to be like a resurgence or like a remake of Fraggle Rock, like some there time is. ago. It's yeah, it's being rebooted now and it's being shot in Calgary. That's that's crazy. But none of the people who worked on the original are on it, but it's, <laughs> except well, no, two of the original puppeteers are coming back to to do their original characters, but uh, everybody else and the writers and directors they're all new. But uh, yeah, it's being shot literally as we speak. They're uh, shooting it the, the reboot in Calgary. That's crazy. I feel yeah. I feel like we just focused on like your acting stuff. That the Fraggle Rock stuff kind of just fell at the wayside. <laughs> well, uh, you know, like I said, I started as a writer, and um, and and I also work as a director. And and the reality is, to have a career in Canadian showbiz, you can't afford to. You know, I couldn't afford to just do one thing. Um, so you know, I, I I've always done all three, and and uh, some years. One is up and one is down, and you know the, it allowed me to survive by being diversified, um, uh, having a career in the arts by by being diversified. Uh, lately, I've been spending more time acting than, than writing, but yeah, I mean, on a career basis, it's about fifty fifty. Amazing, that that is incredible. Well, Sujith, thank you so much for coming back on Pop Alternative. Thank you, Peter. It's a pleasure always talking to you, and uh, I hope you keep watching The Expanse. You'll see me come back. I can't tell you what happens. But just, it just looks pretty, amazing. The look of the show is just incredible. I just want to say uh, that. You have no idea what it's like to be on set. <laughs> like, that stuff is all real. Yeah. You know? But it's up there. Don't, don't you find with sci-fi in terms of, like, the visual? Like, it's it's just... It's out of this world, that show. Literally. Oh, no. They, 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 they have... Um, you know, there's a... You can buy a book uh, that... Uh, it's a big coffee table book about the art of the expanse and if you're into the expanse you know spend the 50 bucks and get it because you see the kind of care i mean i just gave you a little couple of samples of the kind of care put into the show you know in terms of teaching me belter and teaching me low gravity and all that stuff i mean it's all throughout that show so you can actually learn science watching a show like the expanse i know it is you can't learn much science watching star trek yeah it, that is true. I just saw Great too. Show. There's like an animated like Star Trek too now. Well, yeah, I mean, but there's animated Star Wars too. So yeah, I know there's no, but, but the, the Star Expanse, Trek. The Expanse is uh, is unique, I think, because it's so um, uh, it has such depth because it's based on these novels, mm -hmm. and the people who wrote the novels also write the TV series. Ah, uh, yes, so absolutely. it really has an integrity in terms of the story. Mm -hmm. and and it's so uh faithful to the science mm -hmm. so even though it's speculative and set in the future and all that it's as plausible and and done as plausibly as it can be yep um so you know i mean yeah there's there's probably a few things that a physicist would quibble with but not a lot i know and uh where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything uh i'm at sujith varagis everywhere Perfect. Twitter, Instagram. Amazing. Well, th that's awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop Turnative for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Suja Varagis and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.